So apparently the, the Oscars happened. Uh, I didn't care. I think most people don't care anyway. But Jimmy Kimmel got really mad because Trump cared. And Trump truthed, that is, he posted on social media, that there is no worse host. It was actually a really hilarious moment. And the best part of this is that, so apparently live at the Oscars, Jimmy Kimmel reads a post from Trump himself and actually gets an, a, a laugh out of the audience. Uh, I'll just play the clip for you. And then we can talk about the disgusting nature that is the uh, Academy Awards. Jimmy gets uh, 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 roasted. And then, I mean, there's no real point in him reading this. But the real issue and the real story is not Trump. And it's not the uh, the Oscars themselves. It's who the Oscars gave the awards to. And apparently, Poor Things, starring Mark Ruffalo, Willem Dafoe, Emma Stone, won a bunch of awards. And I just felt to myself, this, this movie epitomizes exactly what they are. If you haven't seen the movie Poor Things, I don't recommend it. It is quite possibly one of the worst movies I've ever seen. It's like two, what is it, two hours and 20 minutes long or whatever. It's long. Not the longest. And it's, uh, let's just call it adult content. It's not a movie. There's no movie in this. It is random words said by, by people. The acting is apocalyptic. And it's, no, now hold on. Now, many of you may be saying, wow, I really don't want to watch this. But there is a whole lot of sex with Emma Stone and they show it all. <laughs> Maybe that's why they like the movie. Uh, me. Look, I get it. If you want to watch that kind of stuff to, to not get your rocks off or whatever, you do what you want to do. I, you know, whatever. But if I want to watch a movie, I'm like, I want to see a story and be entertained. Congratulations, Oscars. Now, I guess other things won awards too, but we'll talk about that as well. Let me play this clip of uh, uh, Jimmy Kimmel for you. This show is not about me oh, okay. This is super quiet. Yeah, okay. Then I'm not going to play it because th you know what? I, I want to say this too as well. I got you here. X has a problem with the audio levels of their videos, but maybe it's just the people posting because for whatever reason, I go on YouTube, the audio is normalized. I go on X, everyone's videos are super quiet. And you probably notice it when I play videos off of X on this show. But here we are. I'll, re I'll read it for you. Jimmy Kimmel closed out the Academy Awards Sunday. Before the final award for Best Picture, he took to the stage to read, uh, he, uh, he says a former president said something. Has there ever been a worse host then Jimmy Kimmel at the Oscars, his opening was that of a less than average person trying too hard to be something which he is not and never can be. Get rid of Kimmel and perhaps replace him with another washed up but cheap ABC talent, in quotes, George Slopinopoulos. <laughs> he would make everyone on stage look bigger, stronger, and more gla glamorous. Also a really bad politically correct show tonight. And for years, disjointed, boring, and very unfair. Why don't they just give the Oscars to, the, to, the, to those that deserve them? Maybe that way their audience and TV ratings will come back from the depths, make America great again. I love that. George Slopinopoulos. <laughs> Look, man, during the State of the Union, uh, Trump posted on Instagram that, that Snapchat filter video of Biden with like a chihuahua head. And it's just funny. It's funny. He's ragging on these out of touch people. We have nothing in, in common with. And this is where we are. Just when you, uh, Trump also called the awards show a really bad politically correct show, disjointed, boring and unfair. The Post Menno says just when you thought Jimmy Kimmel's jokes about Robert Downey Jr. couldn't get any worse. Kimmel appeared to skip over the part of Trump's post where he said, why don't they just give the Oscars to those to those that deserve them? Maybe that way their audience and TV ratings will come back. The former host of The Man Show, who was previously dressed in blackface and made degrading gestures towards women, did not mention Trump by name, but asked the audience to guess which former president just posted the comment. He thanked Trump for watching and retorted, isn't it past your jail time? The comedian has a history of adding political commentary during hosting gigs, blah, 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 blah. You know why Jimmy Kimmel did this? Jimmy Kimmel mentioned Donald Trump because it's the only way he can get anyone to talk about the Oscars. And he knows it. For the longest time, it started when Trump announced he was running for president. I mean, I got to be honest. It started a lot uh, uh, earlier than that. Donald Trump generates attention. We get it. And so where are we today? These people long past the era of Trump's presidency, because maybe there's one coming up, still are desperate to invoke the president's name to get attention. 
Former president. I know, I know, I know. But we, 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 we call former presidents Mr. President. So calm down. The Oscars. You know what? Let, let's actually do this fact check. Let's see what, what, what were the Oscars, Oscars ratings. Because I think they're uh, just really, really bad. They are culturally irrelevant. And uh, let's see. Uh, peak audience of 1 million. Is that it? ITV's Oscars broadcast brings in peak uh, audience of over 1 million. Interesting. So that was in the UK. Hey, wow. More power to you. 1 million people in the UK. But uh, do we have, uh, I, don't, I don't think. Okay, here, here we go. 22 hours ago. Let's pull up this right here. Let's take a look at how the Oscars have fallen. Then we'll talk about poor things. I'll give you a review, sort of. The show's record viewership in 1998, Titanic, 55 million viewers. Man, those were the days, huh? Those were the days. Where are we at today? Oh, my God. <laughs> look at this. So you have uh, 1960, 45.8 million. And then I think you have here, yeah. So this is, uh, what is the what is the bl- ratings versus viewers? Okay, well, okay, so I see ratings, whatever that means. Actual viewer numbers, the biggest. 1998. I see. I see. So ratings is comparable to other uh, uh, shows, I guess, other networks. So it looks like the uh, uh, the total viewers for Titanic, 1998, or when Titanic was the big movie, 55 million. Well, I got to say, good on them for reviving. I mean, the worst was in 2021 with 10 million, which is crazy because of COVID. Then they came back to 16. And in 2023, they had 18. So you know what? Hey, that's not so bad. That's not so bad. Uh, I'm sure Jimmy Kimmel is is uh, grateful that he can mention Donald Trump's name and, and help boost those numbers. I didn't watch it. I assume some of you did. But in a nation of, you know, 330 million people, this decline means something. I'll tell you what it means. It's actually quite amazing to see that in 2020, that's that's COVID. It was 23 million. You, sh- you would have expected more. 2014, there were 43 million viewers, and it has just dropped off rapidly. And I'll tell you why. It is the fragmenting of American culture. With shows like mine and many other internet-based commentators, pundits, influencers, etc., people now have a near infinite selection of people to choose from. I made this prediction back in like 2011 when I said that fame will likely not exist in the future. And I had these guys, I was at, um, what is it called? NA, NAB or something? I don't know, National Association of Broadcasters or something. It was in, it was in uh, the Netherlands. And I was like, yeah, look, when you had the Oscars and they got 55 million viewers, and they, they probably really did get around there, right? You have a host. That host is seen by everyone. Everyone knows who that person is. Today, 18 million. And it's not bad. You know, maybe it'll be a little higher this year. I kind of doubt it. Because it's dropped off way too much. But now it's how many people really saw your content. So Jimmy Kimmel certainly gets his, uh, I think he gets like a million, <clears throat> a million to two million on his uh, network show, which is crazy, a crazy decline from where it used to be. And that's great. You know, it's, it's, it's bigger than we get, for sure, for sure, at Timcast IRL. But this is the interesting thing. And the reason why I think fame is, is dying is that people are going to choose to watch who they want to watch. And people probably tuned into reruns of Timcast IRL over uh, the Oscars. Not everybody, but a lot of people that didn't used to exist back in the day. The amount of content and personalities is so massive, it's breaking down. The reason why there were 55 million viewers in 98 is because it was the only thing to watch. How many channels are there? Sure, there's cable, but it was like, that's the thing to watch. Nowadays, there's tons of other things you can watch. I think when you take a look at the movie Poor Things... Uh, it really does exemplify the just the it's the end, man. I, I you know, like there's got to be some resurgence. The night is always darkest for the dawn, but we need a cultural resurgence. Poor Things won 90 awards, 244 nominations. And anybody who's seen it and who is honest can tell you it's garbage. All right. Here's the movie. A woman kills herself before she's actually like full on corpse like. Willem Dafoe's character says before rigor has set in, he takes the baby from her belly, I think, and he puts the baby's brain in the woman's body, creating an adult woman with a baby brain. And basically what happens is. I'll tell you what the movie really is. Uh, It's a woman with a baby brain 
who just has a lot of sex. And if you've ever wanted to see Emma Stone fully nude, full frontal and everything, this movie's got it. If you ever wanted to see her in various positions in, I wouldn't call it softcore, but I wouldn't call it hardcore, somewhere in between. If you're looking for that, this movie's got it in spades. And that's all it has. A science fantasy black comedy. There's no comedy in it. There's literally none. Or Emma Stone's just not funny. I suppose the funniest thing in it was when Willem Dafoe just says he's a eunuch. And I'm like, eh, okay, I guess. Like, I, I, just, I don't get the point or whatever. But basically, this woman, her brain is rapidly developing. She is discovering what it means to be human. And then they actually have a scene where Emma Stone takes a cucumber and, yup, you know where that one's going. And I'm just like, really? Look, this, it's not just about the Oscars. It wins all these awards. At the Academy Awards, be, uh, it was nominated for Best Picture and Best Director. <laughs> Best Actress won Emma Stone. Is that a joke? Best Supporting Actor, Ruffalo. Didn't win that one. Product Design wins. Uh, makeup and Hairstyling won. Costume Design won. Film Editing, it did not win. It got several other nominations. So it, it, it won, what, four? That's not that big a deal. But ultimately, it won like 90 others. How this movie is even getting nominated by any of this stuff, it's just absolutely nuts. Let me see. Uh, let me see if I can look up accolades. Accolades for Groundhog Day. Groundhog Day film. Okay, Groundhog Day is a classic. Everybody knows Groundhog Day. How many, how many awards did this thing win? Groundhog Day was a budget of 15 to 30 million, made $105 million back in the day. And they weren't making as much money back then. And of course, everybody, I'm sure you've seen Groundhog Day. It's absolutely amazing. It's the movie where uh, Bill Murray keeps reliving the same day over and over and over again. It's funny. I don't know if we can look up how many awards it won. I guess not. Maybe, maybe uh, Wikipedia doesn't have that, so I can find it somewhere else. Let me see if I can find that. Accolades. Uh, let's see. Here we go. IMDb Groundhog Day Awards. I'm hoping it won a lot. It won uh, Saturn Awards. Okay, really. Okay. Uh, let's see. It actually won those? Seven wins and nominations. Did it win these? I don't know. Uh, okay, nominee. There it is. Yeah, uh, it won Best Actress, Andy McDowell, Saturn. Uh, it, see, let's see. It did not win there. It won uh, BMI. I don't know what that means. Oh, for uh, for music. That's cool. Uh, best screenplay it won for BAFTA. British Comedy Awards it did win as well. Hugo, uh, what about the, do they have a Academy Awards? I guess they don't, do they have that here? I guess not. Uh, it, it won a ton of awards. It won a ton of awards. Anyway, my point is simply this. Groundhog Day is a classic. And I use it as an example when I reference the 90s and I'm like, we had a lot of really great movies in the 90s. Seriously, we did. And now what do we have? For a while, we've had cookie cutter garbage. We've had, you know, so the one thing I can give poor things is certainly unique and I can appreciate the attempt. But I got to tell you, the acting is non-existent. It's not acting. There is no acting in this movie. Uh, I, I mean, like literally you can call it acting, but I'll, I'll describe it like this. When I, when I watch a movie, my assumption is acting is like a guy walks in a room and he picks up his phone and he says, we just got a call from the bank. How much have you been spending? And then the wife says something like, how much I've been spending is none of your business, Rick. If you've been paying, like, you know, you know, acting like they're doing something and telling a story. All right. And then there's a guy and he's crying and he's like, I just can't do this anymore, man. When I watched my friend take that pill and I'm like, oh, man, he took the pill. What was the pill? And then he was tripping out. I'm like, oh, man, acting, you know, Requiem for a Dream. How's that for a movie? What year was Requiem for a Dream? Let me pull that one up. <laughs> that movie is crazy. Requiem for a Dream was 2000. Okay, so you're not quite in the 90s, but wow. Talk about a movie. All right. In Poor Things, it's literally just like they're saying words because there's nothing to act because it's all just weird art, generic. It's so weird. It's just not acting. I got no beef with the actors. I don't blame them. I blame the directors, the screenplay. I blame the actors, I guess, for wanting to be in it. But, you know, if you have a bad director and you have a bad editor, editors really, really take the cake. Because, look, here's, here's how it goes. I can't speak for big movies. But we've done short films. We've done bits. We've done music videos. 
director means everything because the director is imagining in their mind like, OK, I need you right now. You're the actor. Tell me this. Tell, uh, uh, say the line. I just can't do this anymore. And then if you're reading a script, I just can't do this anymore can be translated in so many different ways. So uh, like, for instance, when I've done voiceover for Freedom Tunes, Seamus has to direct it. It doesn't matter that I did the voice of Dr. Fauci and people had to do a good job because none of it matters if Seamus doesn't tell me how to say the line so that it fits with the greater vision of the larger piece because I can't see any of it. The wild thing about making films and, and, and uh, content is, you know, I, I have no idea what's going on. I get handed the script from Seamus and it's like police officer says, I just can't seem to find the donut. Like, I have no idea what that means. I don't know the punchline of the reference. And so Seamus will say something like, uh, so he's, he, his, his donut was in his lap, but he jumped up because Antifa showed up. Now he can't find his donut. So he's kind of, he's kind of like, I can't find my donut, you know? And then I'm like, okay, let me try and say it that way. In this movie, so I don't blame them, the actors, but holy crap. I don't know how to describe it. I guess it's like, so uh, Emma Stone's character has a baby brain and this lawyer guy played by Mark Ruffalo wants to uh, have relations with her and they do and they show all of it, dude. Okay. They don't show like up close, but it's porn. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not kidding. Emma Stone on a bed, legs spread, Mark Ruffalo grunting, and they show it all in numerous positions and Emma Stone's character becomes a hooker and they show all of that too. Full frontal from all the guys and the women. They just don't show the, you know what I mean? But they do show the guy on top of her. They do show her, they, they, they show like Emma Stone bent over, hands up against the wall with the guy ramming her. You can see it. It's just porn. And I'm like, we're going to get, they're, they're all here. Like we're giving an award. But the acting was really funny because you have like Mark Ruffalo finds out what she's doing and gets mad. And like this, it's acting, I guess, where he's like, what? You did what? And he throws the money. But the way they all speak, it's just not, it's the corniest fake. Maybe it's meant to be like on a stage. You have broken my heart and you are wrong. And I'm like, what? Did, what? He's just saying it in a weird way. It's not like acting. It's not a movie where people are genuinely expressing opinions it's like there are periods where I guess Emma Stone's character, the joke is because her baby, her brain is a baby. She says things that don't make sense. She calls sex furious jumping, which is just stupid. You just call sex like you learn the word and you use the word. Other people have used the word. Why would you? It's so dumb. But she says things that just she speaks in a way that makes no sense. It's supposed to be for the character, I guess. And it's artistic. But there's no acting involved when you say things like food would be great. My face I would like now. It's like, OK. Like, I get it. You can read that. But actually making a convincing portrayal of a story is not done. I don't know. Look, I'm just sitting here ragging on this movie. The movie was bad. Everyone we showed it to was like, that was awful. And I'm like, yeah, I don't know. What was that? At first, I don't want to watch it. And it does this thing where it like it starts off with a very compressed camera that slowly widens and there's no color. It's black and white. And then it starts turning colored, I guess, because like the idea is she's got a baby brain and she's developing. So Talk about really dumb, really, really dumb and and really just infuriating story. I don't know, whatever. I'm done ragging on this. We, we're talking about the Oscars. Look, I look at this and I'm like, this is what they want me to watch the Oscars for. I know, I know. Everyone was praising Oppenheimer. Fine, fair point. But this is, it's stuff like this. The movies are just becoming weird, nonsensical garbage or, you know, I don't know. I can't tell you the last good movie that I've seen. Sound of Freedom was pretty good, but it was fairly basic. You know what I mean? Like we all liked Sound of Freedom. It had a good message, but it was like an episode of Law and Order SVU. You know, that's why it's funny they ragged on it. I'm like, guy, it's like, give it a, a B minus, a B maybe. Entertaining movie. Sound of Freedom was good. It had a good message. It was an independent, you know, uh, production that shattered records. And we're like, this is what we want to get. We want to challenge Hollywood and make better things. But it's not like it was a masterpiece. Groundhog Day, I'm not going to call it a masterpiece. Whatever, it's great, though. Back to the Future 2. I think people don't realize, especially millennials, because we grew up with this, that these things were like were like revolutions. Star Wars. I remember talking to a guy, and I'm like, I don't know, why do people like Star Wars so much? I was like, I've seen it. I've seen a bunch of these movies. And someone said, dude, we did not have this kind of sci-fi before. It was like the first time you watched on a screen a spaceship, like 
lasers and lightsabers. You know, I know that there was Star Trek and stuff like that. But like in a big movie, these effects, it wasn't as ubiquitous. Nowadays, you're a kid. You've got every TV show. They're all doing it. Everyone's doing it. And it's everywhere. It wasn't that for us. And I'm like, oh, I get it. Now what I see with this is they don't they can't figure it out anymore. So they're just spinning around in circles. But hey, it is what it is. I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up at 6 p.m. on this channel. Thanks for hanging out and I'll see you all then.